the first round of three in the playoff league split fixtures has been concluded. And as you can see, the league table is updated. We're going to go through the fixtures very briefly, one by one. Starting with the top league and starting with the game that happened between Stewart and Liam. That ended 2-0 to the somebodies, a result that I did predict. But although it was 2-0, a game that felt a lot closer on paper um, compared to actually watching the match. It was a relatively tight affair. It wasn't a blowout by any means. Um, there was some good movement. There was casualties dealt by the Dark Elf team on the losing side, whereas none was dealt by the winning team. It made it a very interesting game, and it does beg the question whether the injuries are imperative going forward or if they're going to be minor. Stewart currently has yet to pick up a result in this playoff fixture round, but that is because only one game has been played, and the same can be said about me, who I finally picked up my first defeat of the season against one of the other two teams that have not lost this season. The Trumpton Carnies, which was Gavin. A 1 0 0 draw. No, 1 1 draw in our league meeting. This time ended in a 2 1, where the dice were clearly picking favourites. At one point in a turn, out of my six ogres, five of them boneheaded in a row. I also only dealt one casualty, which is very uncharacteristic. And also, to be fair, only one casualty was dealt back. It was a very interesting and tight affair, but one that did end 2-0. Gavin only picked up touchdowns, whereas there was a single casualty. Um, the other casualty that was dealt to me was through a fell, so it doesn't count as statistics. But interesting nevertheless. The real interesting fixture, though, is what happened in the lower league split, which we'll show here, because I did make a promise and I made a bet. And I said to Tom, if he could get more league points than Jim in the bottom half, where the league split is, because obviously he's no longer playing anymore due to, like, family and stuff. He won his first game. He scored his first, not touchdown, but touchdowns, plural. As he gained a revenge on his brother for beating him 3-0 and came back with a 3-0 of his own. Also picking up a couple casualties on the way, but did take some in return. Giving himself one casualty shy of maximum league points of 11, but picking up 9 league points out of what was needed out of 18, if I remember right at the time. Like, unbelievably fantastic result. And genuinely... Bad. Let's have a quick look though at the second round of fixtures and I'll show you the, the last round as well because you can figure it out. So for the top half, for the championship league split half, the next fixture is going to be me versus Liam and then Gavin versus Stu. And then to wrap things up, it is going to be Liam versus Gavin and me versus Stu. Those are the final fixtures of this season for those in the championship half. Looking at the lower half, the first, the second fixture, obviously, Tom, you will not have to play because it is the game you were supposed to have against Jim. And then Sam will be playing Lee in the final. It will be Tom versus Lee, which is the game where Tom will either win the bet or lose the bet. And then Sam will have that day off as well, where we'll be culminating. But let's look quickly look at the league table, shall we? In the championship half, as now all games are played and we're all on equal footing, Gavin is currently top on 55 points, three points ahead of myself, who now has their first loss. And then in third is Liam on 47 points, and I'm not really going through all the touchdown differences in Kaz, I'll let you guys view that. And then, bottom of the championship, half on 32 points, 15 points behind is Stu. In the Wooden Spoon contention, 
we have Lee, who is top on 35 points. We have Sam on 30 points. We have Jim's team on 26 and the Dark Elf team of Tom on 16. Now, we know he's going to gain six points for his game against Jim that will not be played, putting him on 24 points, which mathematically, no, 22 points, sorry. Which mathematically means Tom only needs to pick up four points against Lee go seventh in the table we'll still pick up the wooden spoon because he's the partitioner and the person still playing but point being looking now at the top scorers i will only read the top 10 but there are as you can see here 40 individual scorers starting in number 10 is mr cuthbert of the trumpton carnies on two mad max of the enter heroes on two in ninth eighth is eric of the somebodies on two Seventh is Wade Wilson of the Anti-Heroes on three. Sixth, Otto Somebody's three. Mr. Grubb of the Trumpton Carnies on three. Top four is where we get into those multi-multis. Nuka Steve of the New Color Boys has scored four. Ian of the Somebody's has scored four. Diarrhea of Fatberg Squad, four. And currently, first place is Derek of the Somebody's with seven. Looking at the completion awards, top 10 is Semi of the Little Todgers with one, Pork Sword of the Little Todgers with one, Nuka Cola of the Nuka Cola Boys with one, Morg and Thorg of the Star Players Union with one, Eric of the Somebodies with one, Silver of the Anti Heroes with two, Vermin Collar of the Fat Boy with four, Gloriel Summerbloom, who picked up all of her Star Player Union completions in the last game with five, Nuke Grape of the Nuke Color Boys with 10, and LeBron of the Somebodies with 19. The Ogre is still trying, but it's probably foregone at this point. Of the casualties, there are 55 individual casualty dealers, which is glorious. Looking at the top 10, Mr. Pew of the Trumpton Carnies with three. Oh. Lump of Only Fells and Inducements with three. Eric of the Somebodies with three. Deep Root Strong Branch of the Star Players Union with three. Gigantus Raticus of the Fatberg Squad with four. Fatberg of the Fatberg Squad with four. Cheese and Onion Walkers of the Trumpton Carnies with five. Nuka Victory of the Nuka Color Boys with six. Pomp of Only Fells and Inducements with seven. And in first place, Nuka Cranberry of the Nuka Color Boys with seven. Very, very close. Very, very interesting. I cannot wait for this league to conclude because, as I have yet to mention, we have been having considerable, considerable interest in league for season four. A lot of people will be wanting to join as this season was a much, much smaller affair compared to the second season. But it looks like we will be growing once more. And I cannot wait. See you later, guys.